Hi everyone, in this 10 minute JavaScript tutorial, we'll be creating this, a rotating 3D cube. The first thing that you need to do is to create a new blank text file, so a new text document. Name it cube.html. The HTML uh, extension is important. Yes. If you open that up, it should open up in your default uh, browser, and as you can see, there's nothing there, as expected. So what you need to do is to open it up in your favourite text editor. For example, you could use Notepad++, but what I'll be using for this tutorial is Visual Studio Code. So go ahead and download that if you like. The first thing that we need is the HTML layout. So in code, we can just do an exclamation mark here and hit Enter, and that gives us all the basic HTML layout. Rename the title to cube, that's what's shown on the tab of your browser. And inside the body, we need to put some script tags, that's where we'll be doing all our JavaScript. So go ahead and do that. We need some constants, const is the keyword, and we usually capitalise the constant name. So the colour for the background I'll set to black, but you can choose any colour you like. Shift, Alt, Down Arrow in Visual Studio Code to duplicate a line. Colour for the cube we'll set to say yellow. Uh, we need the rotational speeds in each of the directions, so speed around the x-axis we'll set to say 0 0.05. Uh, that's essentially the number of rotations per second. Duplicate that for each of the directions. Y and Z. Set Y to say 0.15 and set Z to say 0.10. We need to define what a point in 3D space is, so we'll call that point 3D. We'll define that as a function that takes three parameters, x, y, and z. Um, as a function, we need to use curly braces here. We just need to set each of the variables, so this dot x will equal x, this dot y will equal y, and this dot z will equal z. Next we're going to set up the canvas and the context, so we need to create a variable called canvas. We need canvas to do all our graphical stuff in HTML. Canvas will equal document dot create element canvas. We then need to append that to the document, so document dot body append child and then our variable name in there, canvas. And then we need to create our context, I'll just call that CTX, that'll be canvas.getContext, 2D is what we want to use here. Next we need to set up some dimensions, I'll just copy and paste some stuff in here. We'll have two variables, H and W, height and width, document.documentElement.clientHeight, and the same thing dot client width. Basically that just allows us to use our entire browser window space for our graphics. But we have to set our canvas height and width, so canvas dot height will equal h and canvas dot width will equal w. We also need to set up the colours and lines, so we'll need to go context fill style, that'll be what the colour of the fill for the background is, so we'll set that to our colour background and we'll need the colour of the cube, which will be the stroke style. Stroke style will equal colour cube. We also need to set up some line properties, I was playing around with this before. Context.LineWidth equals W divided by 100, that's essentially the thickness of the lines of the cube. And Context.LineCap equals round. If you don't put that in, it just looks fairly chunky, so that's to smooth it out a little bit. Next, we need to set up the animation loop. Uh, for that, we'll need to keep track of a couple of things. We'll need the time delta, which is essentially the time difference between the current frame and the previous frame in milliseconds. And we'll also need to keep track of the time of the last frame, time last. Just set that to zero to begin with. We'll be using the inbuilt function request animation frame, which we'll call our function loop. We'll make that now. Function loop. Uh, it'll have a parameter time now. And we just want to calculate the time difference first, so that'll be time delta will equal time now minus time last, and then we'll set the time last to equal time now for our next frame. The first thing that we should paint is our background, the black background. So context.fill rectangle. 
The starting point is 0, 0, and the width of our screen and the height of our screen to fill in that canvas. And finally, in our loop, we have to call the next animation frame, so we just call request animation frame loop again, which will call itself after that frame has been completed. Now we should be able to test that, so go to your browser and just hit refresh. There we go, it's all black. You can see that there's a bit of a border there, we can get rid of that easy enough. Just scroll all the way up to the top, uh, just under our title here in the head element, we'll need to put some style tags. And inside there, we'll just need to put some CSS, body, with a margin equal to zero, and canvas, display, block. That should get rid of all those margins for us. Let's check it out. Just hit reset. There we go. I'll just put it into full screen mode. Uh, hit reset again. Yeah, it's a completely black screen. Good. Now we need to set up some cube parameters, so just scroll down just before the animation loop. Here are some cube parameters that I made earlier. Uh, we'll need to know the center of the cube, so var cx will equal w divided by 2. Basically the cube will be centered on the screen. cy equals h divided by 2. cz will just set to 0. And the size of the cube, so that's essentially the radius of the cube, will equal h divided by 4. Next we need to set the corners of the cube, or the vertices as they're technically known. So we'll just use an, uh, an array of 3D points for that. So new point 3D, which takes x, y, and z. Remembering that each corner is offset by, the, by half the size of the cube. So cx minus size, because our size essentially represents half the size. Uh, CY minus size, and CZ minus size. I'll just paste in the remaining seven points. As you can see, they're just different combinations of pluses and minuses to represent the eight corners of the cube. I'll just delete that last comma, it's not necessary. The next thing that we need to know about our cube are the edges. We need to know the edges so that we can draw them successfully. There are eight vertices, but in between each one, there is an edge for a total of 12 edges. So let's represent that with an array of arrays. I've gone ahead and done the hard work for us. Uh, basically, there's going to be two points in each edge. That, for example, 0, 1 represents this point and that point, which is one edge. The next one is 1, 2, so 1, 2, that represents the next edge, and so on. So these four edges represent the back face, these four the front face, and the remaining four represent the connecting sides of the cube. So that's all we need to know for our cube. The next step is to draw the cube. We can do that down in our animation loop. So just after where we draw the background, I'll just paste in some code here, we need to draw each edge. So we'll use a for loop. For let edge of edges, so that means for every edge in the edges array, context begin path, context move to vertices edge 0 dot x, vertices edge 0 dot y, so that moves to the first point of our first edge. Uh, context line 2, vertices edge 1 dot x, vertices edge 1 dot y, so that will move to the second point of that edge. And then finally we have to go context stroke to draw the actual line. So let's try that out, go to your browser, hit refresh, there we go. So we're looking at the square from the cube from face on, so obviously we can't see any sort of three dimensions or anything like that. In order to do that, we'll need to add some rotation. So just above where we draw the cube, let's add some rotation. Let's rotate around the z-axis first. Let angle equal time delta, the difference between frames, times 0 0.001, that's to convert milliseconds to seconds, times the speed z, which is the constant we set initially, times math.pi times 2. Math.pi times 2 is just essentially 360 degrees, but we have to work in radians in JavaScript. Now that we know how far the cube has rotated in this frame, we need to use that angle to calculate the new positions of the vertices. So we'll have to use a for loop for that. I won't go into too much detail as it uses some pretty tricky trigonometry. Uh, perhaps you should just pause this and copy this code out, but ultimately we need to update the position of each of the vertices. Now let's try that out in our browser. Uh, just hit refresh. 
There you go, it's rotating. As you can see, it's rotating along the Z-axis. The Z-axis is the one that's coming out of the screen towards us. But it doesn't look 3D, does it? So we'll need to add some more rotation in the other directions. For the X-axis, we use very similar code. The only difference is that we have to update our trigonometry functions here. Uh, probably just pause that or download the code and give it a go yourself. Once we've got that, we can check out our cube, hit refresh, and as you can see, we're rotating in two directions now. Pretty cool, eh? And finally, we just need to add the rotation along the y-axis. Again, very similar code. You could probably get away with not doing this, but just for completeness, we'll do it anyway. Save that, change to your browser window, hit refresh, and there we have it, the final cube rotating around in space. Just head back to the code and head right up to the top. You can play around with those constants that we set up before. For example, if you wanted a green cube, you could change that. On a purple background, you could do that as well. Update the screen, there we go. You can also play around with some of the speeds. Just say we want it to go really fast in the X direction. So we'll change that to 1.05. Give that a go. As you can see, it's hurtling through space extremely quickly. Anyway, have a muck around with that. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this tutorial. And if you have any questions for me, as usual, leave them for me in the comments below. Cheers!